So um, I thought we should start with a very simple question, um, because in a way it's a very um, it's a very simple ballet in some ways. And I wondered if you could talk a little bit about uh, who the man and the woman are in this in Sonatine. Who are they? Uh, they are professional dancers from yesterday, <laughs> <laughs> uh, inspired by by Balanchine. Mm. Uh, choreography and, yes. and, and by the music or the way he yes. tells you about the music, you know, and his way of dancing because he was really dancing, mm. you know, when he was showing us. Oh, yeah. yes. So I think that's all. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. But also a certain amount of Frenchiness, ah. if I can say such a thing, yeah. because of us, so it's not because just of the, the composer, mm -hmm. and because of those years in France when he knew Ravel a little bit. And um, I find it goes back to a sort of neoclassical time that Lifa was the perfect example of mm -hmm. having been presented by Balanchine in a way that used his qualities and you didn't know the shortcomings. I think also the, there's an elegance to the whole thing that that's, you know that it's the tradition, you know that you ask who these people are. They are people from an older tradition of ballet also, I feel, you know. Older than the time that the ballet was made? Yes, right, because that's what Balanchine knew through Russia, through, like Violet said, in, in Paris Opera also, what he knew. And uh, that sense, that sense of tradition, you know, that going back to that tradition, that thing that we take for granted, we move one arm a certain way, but somehow it comes from somewhere, you know. And you see some, even some lithograph of the 19th century, and you see somebody may bring one arm here, and the head will go yes. directly there. It's not going to be here, you know. Very so it's 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 part of, to the, of that. And that's what's so wonderful to be part of of, of Balanchine choreography. It's that you have all of that behind you mm. to support you, also, you know. So you think, in a way, he was looking toward the past in this ballet, into his own past and his own history with Ra with Ravel and with France. Yes, but with the sophistication of all that he had accomplished, uh, accomplished after. So it's a very sophisticated rendering. Uh, he made a little joke one time. He said, the man will invite the woman. That's how it was in my time. He said, no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't think he was nostalgic about the past. Mm -hmm. No. No. It's a com in a way it just comment. it came yes, or it came normally. It just it was just there because it was part of who we we was, you know. So I think that's what it was. How much do you think the ballet reflects you as people and as dancers? Dancers, but dancers being people, you eventually get the people that you wanted or not. <laughs> but uh, dancers. And also, we were French. I mean, so I mean, it's a cliche already to say this, but right. but uh, yeah, I think there's a right. connection between the, between the two of us that Balanchine knew would happen for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's that that connection, that that way of being together, mm -hmm. having that uh, yeah, that ex that style or that experience. And like that. just the beginning when you invite me. Um, it's typical of the kind of politeness and etiquette and all the things that still existed then, you know, and the distance also a little bit before right. it becomes a partnering <coughs> situation. Mm -hmm. right. But the dis distance at first, a little, as we say in French, salamalek, a little bow yeah. before you do, you say what you have to say. You know, there's a little story that I love that story. Uh, is that uh, Balanchine uh, saw me with Patricia, you know, uh, in the streets, and I was taking, I was taking your arm, and then Mr. B was behind, you know, and then led the next day, whatever he said, you know, you don't take your arm, you mm -hmm. offer your arm. Mm -hmm. That was in the street, you know, so so it was there, f you know, the manners that you bring are, are part of your life, of who you are, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you feel that he um, included any sort of Violette specials or any Jean-Pierre? He always got our number. 
in a way that we didn't even suspect. Right. Much more than we even knew about right. ourselves, or differently also. And he was way ahead of them. And sometimes what happened is that you recognized yourself in something that you get you to this is just what I like to do, or this is just me. And he knew, you know, those things. What were those key moments uh, in the ballet? I mean, I, the, the use of the head is so important, the, the hips, the shoulders. Is, is that something that he saw, saw in you, or is it something he asked you to do, or is it something that he just allowed you to he do? Did, he gave it to me, and I recognized Fortunately, most of the time, what he was giving me. Also, I recognized something about my old strong feet in those days. You know, I, I recognized he used things that I had. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, definitely. Right, like, and like, he did like the musicality, same with you. I guess. Like the, like the wonderful musicality of Violet. Mm. It's all there. But well, you can develop. Yes. I think he yes. knew that you would develop. You would, yes. It could, I yeah. Would yeah cherish it and right because there was always always room for dancers to not add to it but somehow to make it their own yeah. to make it their own and that's what's uh, wonderful what about with you uh, there's this wonderful valiant quality in the in the male uh, uh, p partner in this ballet I, is that something that he he saw in you or that you I never looked at myself much, so I don't know. Well, but there's this <laughs> open-chested yes, quality, right. the, the head back. Yes, I guess. Yeah. It's hard for me to judge. You know, I just <laughs> no, don't know. No, but also but, with know. your background with the Paris Opera, guess, dancing right. all the classics, right. and some of the more contemporary mm. things, all en petit beja, right. everything. Right. He knew what he could expect to obtain I guess, from right. mm -hmm. I guess, yeah. yeah. So what are the key moments in the ballet for you? Listening to the mu to the pianist, <laughs> it's one. You know, it's, it seems like nothing, but not you're joke. on stage, right? You're on stage, yes. and you know that the audience knows from the beginning you are going to be inspired by this music, by this pianist. Mm -hmm. You have that connection, you know. So I and think that's to me that uh, to us, I think it's a. And also moment. because of Balanchine, prime consideration of the music even before the people, in a way. People will be right for it that he chose, but first comes the music for him. Mm -hmm. So then it followed a course that became very natural for us to get aboard. You know, it was a, the music first, and we let the music be. We don't right. interfere. Dancers are bowing to the music That's before right. they take part. And then we're obliged to move because it's right. irresist irresistible. Right. And we know we have good choreography coming. Right. Mm -hmm. So it, from one thing to the other, it's in a good order to begin. Right. And that's how it goes. So it is, definitely. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Brought, yeah. Did he talk at all about, about Ravel or about the piece or what he liked about it or what he? I don't, I don't, really remember. I don't remember words, but Balanchine was not saying that many words. What I remember is Balanchine starting to dance it. Mm. And how did he show it? Uh, you know, he was such an elegant uh, uh, oh. choreographer and the manners, the grand. It was like uh, seeing if somebody wanted to know, you know, that let's say in 50 years, nobody knows about aristocrat. What is that, an aristocrat? Because to be gone by the time, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe before. And then you will say, but look at Balanchine moving. And mm -hmm. they say, oh, that's what it is, an aristocrat, you know? So there was something aristocratic about this ballet as well? Uh, I think so, yeah, oh, I think yes. so. But it's Balanchine who bring, who bring that. Yes. So what I remember, it's really Balanchine. Yeah. I just love the way he moves his wrist and hands, you mm -hmm. know. It was never just staying somewhere. It was really saying something, like what also the feet are saying and the legs mm -hmm. are saying. So I remember him dancing and like the natural way of placing the shoulders and all of that. And that was so inspiring, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. It remains platonic in that sense, in the good side of that. But it's all there, you know, so relationships show. But, you know, I keep thinking of Mr. B being a little Russian uh, military cadet mm -hmm. also, and having had the discipline, you know, he bowed to us. He bowed to people, you know, normally, most mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. And especially when he didn't want to answer s some <laughs> burning question, he would bow. Sure. 
and very exit. politely <laughs> and disappeared. <laughs> but you know, he had, that was not a big show for him. It was natural from his education. Yeah. You know, just one thing I want to say, the inspiration, I think also is that uh, for me to be inspired by Violette, you know, so it was almost like listening to Violette. Do you see what I mean? In listening, you know, not with my yeah. head, you know, but just the whole body was listening to what was happening with Violet's body, and that would inspire me. Yeah, and help me. It, it's interesting in the coaching. You seem to remember a lot about Violet's movement as well as your own, but but particularly also about Violet. Oh, yeah. There was something. It, it's as if the steps really right. captured some very something particular Violet, quality. Yes, something. Some of those steps, or the way she was doing some steps, not just in this body. Mm -hmm. Everybody will know that's Violet. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be a shadow of uh, the lights would be making a shadow and we'd see somebody moving a certain way, say, that's good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what is the relationship okay. between the man and the I woman? I don't know. That. <laughs> you see, right, right. I hear about it sometimes. From other people. <laughs> <laughs> what, was it, what is the relationship between the man and the woman in the ballet? It, I think it's a pretty good one, but I could not explain yes, it. Yes, it's, it's a very good one. <laughs> but you said no something trauma, at the beginning. No it's real. not only a friendship. It's a... Uh, it could be uh, p partners, it could be um, um, professional sharing a situation together. Also, again, the manners, you have the great classical manners because you've been raised as mm -hmm. a student and mm -hmm. a dancer at the Paris Opera. Right. So there's an aristocratic approach immediately. It sets the bar that high. And then for the women, you have to live up to that. You can't afford not to. You just have to live up to that. So in that sense. At the beginning of the coaching, you said something to Ashley Laracy about you don't really know quite what will happen, but yes. you have to trust. So yes. there is a little bit of a doubt in the relationship. Well, all of us are worried people. Dancers are worried about doing well enough, about mm -hmm. being dancing enough, etc., etc. But um, in that sense also, it's because there was time, we were not rushing, we were not forcing the situation in any way to relish. Mm -hmm. We had time to relish before swallowing, mm -hmm. you know, right, mm -hmm. right. really. Yeah, I agree with that, that sense that whatever you are going to produce, I mean, show, is going to come from inside of you. It's not outside there. Yes. We're not trying to prove something. Mm -hmm. you know? that's right. And that's what I think uh, uh, Ashley and also Chase also understood so well and yes. made su such a good fast changes mm -hmm. between the first time they did it mm -hmm. and then it became their own thing and they were not yes. just dancing outside. Mm -hmm. anyway, it was really coming from inside that I really appreciate the work that they did together. It was very nice. Yeah. You said at the beginning of our conversation that um, the, uh, the ballet has very French qualities in part because obviously he chose to make it for you. and. Um, I read somewhere that Arlene Croce wrote that it, the ballet is a, about the French virtue of making much out of little. <laughs> Does that sound right? It, it yeah, sounds right too, it. yes, it's because it's it. not the, if something that jumps in your face, like 30 to 40 days doubled. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> you know, it's none of that. It's not at all that. It's just um, a moment in life, and in this particular form of life, music and dance, that is, that he makes very natural, and nothing is forced. Nothing no, is right. forced. There's a demonstration of also what are those beautiful yes. classical steps? What's the basic? Mm -hmm. What's the core of this step? A développé or mm -hmm. whatever you know. What is it? So it's sort of seen. Really showing. Shown, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and it becomes important because so it's, it is important. Uh, we talked uh, about a few of the French elements, but there's also a kind of a strong Russian folk element in the ballet, which is interesting. Um, do you feel that, the, in a way, there's a conversation between the two styles happening? I guess I could answer maybe just a little bit. Uh, yeah, for example, the second movement is a menuet, mm -hmm. and you expect a menuet, but, it, but it's a three, you know? So, so he use it as almost like a le mazurka, mm -hmm. yes. you know, yeah, so, so a little Russian touch, mm -hmm. so, yeah. And also a little bit of a French relaxed thing. I don't know the word flâner in America to, mm -hmm. 
the ambulate by in a very loose way. To wonder. You know, to, you're wondering. There's a kind of like, you know, when she comes in with that little thing there, it's like being on the boulevard and looking at the, you know, vitrine right, yeah. and the things. Yeah, yeah Flannery says no, for no purpose, I mm -hmm. think. And also a little bit something medieval, and I can't imagine why I keep thinking chevaleresque, that chevaleresque, mm -hmm. chevaleresque. Yeah. In both of you, or is that more in the, in yes, the male Yes, at, at a little moments of that for both of us. Mm -hmm. In what way, chevaleresque? Chevaleresque, you should answer that one because yeah, no, I don't three more yes, for you that Yes, just uh, that uh, Bravura, clarif yeah, and also mm. the clavi clarification in a way, I don't know, that's not a good and word, also between men and a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. you know, and that also distance. looking at the woman in a nice way, mm -hmm. right, you sure, know, in an sure, admirative sure, right, way. Right, right. That's yeah. another mm -hmm. thing. There's also something that's very typical of a classical ballet is the distance between the two. There's certain distance. Yes, absolutely. You know, it's very intimate the whole thing, but there's a distance. Yes. Because you don't you don't like that no, and you we're offer you are, you know. Yeah, right. So there's that distance. But it's a way also to look at the person, you yes. know, which is wonderful. Yeah. Did he let you try things and then say yes? Or was ev or did every single nuance come from him? It happened to me about something else, where he gave me a step which I adored, but I w w was not very comfortable, and he said, I'll change it. I said, oh, no, I'm going to work on it. He said, no, no, dear, I have a, an even better one. And he gave me another step that was absolutely <laughs> wonderful, so right. I never protested. That's <laughs> it, yeah. He, he was available, ready, mm -hmm. he was uh, things ready for yeah. any situation. Yeah, I think if, if um, dancer could fail that or couldn't do that one step and that dancer would not want to change it because that dancer would not feel would feel that he or she has failed right, was right. Yeah, right, right. Mm -hmm. so you don't want to fail <laughs> really on, it means must be your fault if you don't do it well you know that step has to be is right. Wonderful. But that's in the negative sense, but what about in the positive sense of seeing something that you do, like the way you used your shoulders, or the way you used your head, or the way you showed off your hip, or your, your turnout, and saying, do that more, you know, I'll make a step especially for you. Did that happen really, in Sonatine? It's never happened really, to, no. to me, but I was amused to after my first concerns of learning it, doing it well, da da da, to see, oh, this is funny, this is really something I do well, mm -hmm. actually, <laughs> or that I really like particularly. It was almost as if he had guessed as well as known. He also guessed so who we were what, and what should be done. Also, it depended on his intention with the choreography. Sometimes it was very much for education of that dancer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And sure. sometimes it was for, okay, let's go with the stuff, it's ready, let's serve it, right, right. you know. But th th he had both purposes. Yeah, I think he really knew what would look good on you. Right. You know, that was a... A given. Yeah, that was an uh, instinct. Or oh, yeah. Whatever, yeah. That, yeah. You talked about the partnering in, in this piece and the distance, and I was interested, there's so much crossed for, uh, forearms, uh, so much of the partnering happens that way, and do you know what the source of that was? Or I think that's Does it happen in other ballets yeah. that you... I just know for that, if it's crossed between us, the arm, then it means it's going to resolve. Push. You know, it's going to uh -huh. be, there's a, Closing, there's going to be an opening, there's going to be something happening after, you know. And logical. also, he liked to disguise the difficulties of partnering, mm -hmm. where other people might want to have the circus side of wanting to yeah. show the difficulty and the danger. He wanted to show the ease and the unusual way, but the mm -hmm. ease. Yeah. Do you remember when, when Balanchine, I think, was asked about how come he didn't do that many lifts? And he said, oh, what's so special about the lift? You go up and then you have to go down. <laughs> <laughs> I always love that somehow, yeah. you know. So yeah, it was not, it was not for effect, you know. There's a lot of partnering also that has a kind of resistance and pulling and pushing. A little bit, you know, you pull her, you, you, you know, the, there's momentum. It's, it's right. not just happening, there's effort and... Right, but that's good choreography. Right? Yeah. As, as, <laughs> but as you know, that's what's also so wonderful. I remember learning that from, from Balanchine coming from the Paris Opera, was that also you 
you use the floor a lot mm -hmm. in Gavanchi. Mm -hmm. You really use the floor, you resist, you mm -hmm. push the floor. You, uh, it's not just you put your foot down, there's something that really almost like a, you know, a tennis player will go from yeah. one side to push like to the Like a diving next. board. Yeah, there's something there, exactly, okay. yeah. Do you know why Balanchine chose this piece to begin the Ravel Festival? I mean, the Ravel Festival, 1975, I think there were, what, 15 ballets? Um, yeah, it, it opened the festival. It opened the yeah. festival. Um, it was sort of the, the welcoming ballet. Why did he choose this piece? What, what was special about it? Did he talk about it? We must have been the ambassador. Uh, yes, I French. think we were the obvious <laughs> one, and not only that. Don't forget, he invited Madeleine Malraux, mm -hmm. right. who had been married to two Malraux, mm -hmm. and that's quite a bit. And <laughs> I had met her through my friend Raja Rao, the Indian writer. And uh, so she was the third, uh, how do you say? <laughs> Uh, ambassador? Ambassador. Right. Really, That's she right. was that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, thing. That's mm -hmm. right. And also because it's such a pristine, lovely quality. It has, I don't want to diminish it by saying a hors d'oeuvre quality, but it doesn't have the weight of a plat de resistance, mm -hmm. you know, of a main course, but it's a delicious zakuski. Mm. I think there must be a little part that Balanchine wanted to tell everybody, uh, you know, this and this music, but what about Sonatine, mm -hmm. you know, that nobody yes. knew. I mean, nobody, yes. it was not played that much. Uh, maybe it was in concert, I guess, mm -hmm. but not that much. People didn't know that in general. Mm -hmm. So that was a little jam. Oh, you think he, right. he had it saved, you know, saved up as his little s secret piece? It's very possible. Yeah. yeah. Did he talk at all about Ravel and what he uh, admired about his music? Uh, he didn't make that many ballets to Ravel, but there's obviously La Valse and uh, uh, back with the Ballet Russe, he had made a, he had choreographed uh, L'Enfant des Sortilèges and uh, then obviously there's Tombeau yeah. de Coutrin. He must have had affinities for, for mm -hmm. Ravel. Yes. But why Ravel? Why then? Why did you, ha what was in the air? I don't know. I, I mean, he's one of the great masters, you know. So he started with a festival for Stravinsky, and then mm -hmm. the next festival was Ravel, you know. Mm -hmm. So there must have been tremendous respect also for. Is it also because Ravel. it was but the music of his youth, why. too, in a way, of his he Parisian? He met Ravel. He told me, I said, Did you know him? He said, Not well, but I had met him a few times. And one, I heard him play the piano. Mm -hmm. He was, you know, working and all this, so he had met Ravel mm -hmm. also. And did he say anything about No, Ravel? he didn't say more than that. What he was uh, like? Because I was curious to know more about, yeah. about. Did he ever play Sonatine, Balanchine, on the piano? Oh, himself? I don't know. He must have played it at home, he I guess. Could, you but know. you never Because you know, he had all yeah. the scores at home, yeah. so, yeah. yeah. Did he ask anything specific of the pianist? Did he want certain musical qualities? Well, I think by invite, inviting Madeleine, he was already making the statement that she was the ideal third larron, as we say no. in French. But it always felt natural what Balanchine was showing, uh -huh. showing, you, showing you, you know. As he does most of the time, you think that that is the solution once and forever. Right. What you hear and what you have to do with it. Mm -hmm. Right. You feel mm -hmm. it's you know, right. married. I, I have it. some memories of some yeah. uh, some ballets from a long time ago before for me before going to New York City Ballet. And it was difficult to remember the steps. If we would not do a ballet for six months or one mm -hmm. year, you would listen to the music and you couldn't really remember the step. With Balanchine, it was always easy to remember the step because they fit so so well yeah. music. So I don't know how to explain it more but but that's really, there was, you felt so close to that link between the music and the choreography. You know? yeah. the, fir the first movement ends with this astonishing image uh, where the woman pulls the man off stage and he, they're back to back, their arms are up, and the man can't see where, he, where he's going. Yeah, it's <laughs> extraordinary. It's something do, you don't your, forget. Yeah, what is it's something your, you don't forget, yeah. <laughs> It's something that, do you like? It's the incredible. The woman pulling the man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right, right. But, but it then seems later to be it has a willing. sort of echo. It seems to be yeah. willing, yeah. yeah. Echo with the next, right, yeah. right. So how did that happen? I mean, what, what did it, did it, you sort of know this was an extraordinary moment? Uh, I are. think so, it felt that way, yeah. yeah. It felt that way. Was it, were there but any clues just, about what he was thinking? 
Not at all for me, it was not. If I had to guess, I would say that Mr. B um, enjoyed being, uh, how do you say, possessed by women, I must say <laughs> smitten by women. And there, there was sometimes this kind of um, things coming out to show that the women had the high ground and the man was enslaved mm. in a way. Right. The poor guy right. is, and the woman is very quietly taking advantage right. of her advantage. Follow me if you can. Yes, Follow you know, you, you can. can expect those things. I'm not saying that it's for sure, right. mm -hmm. but it appears in so many yeah, ways. Yeah, exactly. There's, for example, in the, in the violin concerto, mm -hmm. there's a wonderful moment, which is the end of one of the two pas de deux. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the man is, uh, is reaching toward her, and then the last chord, there was one chord, I remember him doing that, and he said, now turn around and fall. Mm -hmm. He didn't say exactly that, you know, but, and so that's, anyway, that's what the man is doing, is fall, and he looks at her and she's above mm -hmm. him. And he said, you don't expect it at all, yeah. that just in one chord, you transfer between the one who wants and the one who, who uh, the eternal give brothers. yourself, yeah. <laughs> There's something about blindness as well. I mean, there, there are these moments when you sort of cover your face and... No, that's... No, you sorry, don't no, no. No, because, tell me. Yeah, no, no, because that's typical of, I forget what, st what start it is, or uh, a folk version, but that's very... Mm -hmm. Russian. So mm -hmm. that's really part of the folk of... Right. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but in other ballets, dancers. like in, uh, what is it, Four T's, where the man backs off stage with, and he yeah. can't see where he's going. And I think in Baiser de la Fée also, sure. there's that moment where the man, uh, the, the man leads right. the woman right. off. Sure. Did you feel like there was something about the beyond yeah. being expressed there? Yeah, you, f you feel that it's more that, I don't know how to call that, but it's part of the subconscious of, mm. the, yes. of, the, of the being a man, of being a woman, and of the, yes, there's something that mm -hmm. it was deep inside, what we all know and feel, yeah. and you know, etc. It was profound. Yeah, definitely. Did he ask for a particular quality there, or you knew what he wanted? No, it seemed, it, 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 it seemed to work was a somehow. very interesting um, situation with the bodies where they were, and uh, in itself it would have been interesting but if we want to look into something more, we could say yes. It's, yeah. mm -hmm. it's well, the eternal know. game between the man and the right. woman. You never know, it would be so interesting to know that at the time that Balanchine, for example, in Violin Concerto, just realized that he turned around and goes on the floor, that Balanchine has, has had a, a thought about one of his wife that when he was absolutely desperate, you know. He said this? No, but maybe no. he did. <laughs> maybe. Uh, it would be so interesting to yeah. know, you know, those thoughts yeah. coming and going. Where does it come All our from? thoughts, you know, they would yeah. come like that. So maybe one came like that and he saw himself and he said, yeah, that's where I was, you know. So we'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> um, in, the, the, in the second movement, the one that's uh, Tant de Menue, um, it has such an interesting musicality. It has a sort of start and stop, and, and you, you alternate, and then there's the layering of y your phrase with your phrase. Talk a little bit about the quality of the musicality in that, in that movement. What, what makes grounded, it work? There's something grounded mm -hmm. that, that I love, I must say. And uh, there's that energy. It's a different energy than the first movement. Mm -hmm. It's different mm -hmm. energy than mm -hmm. last movement also. So it has that, that, it's that power, that, uh, that grounding. Mm -hmm. really and we're grounding. separated also in yeah. some of our sections. Mm -hmm. We function s uh, not as a regular pas de deux, or we, right. have, we have pieces of expression mm -hmm. made for us uh, that um, occupy a whole picture, but they're pieces. It's almost like you're in two different registers yes. at the same That's time. Right. Yes. That's right. Yes. And it's not related to the first movement. Mm -hmm. It's not related to the, the third movement. Yeah. I don't know, there's something that, you know, one, two, three, it feels that the third count, one, two, three, the third count is deeper in the ground, mm. you know, instead of one, two, three, one, Isn't two, three. Isn't that the mazurka, three, one, as yes. you were saying? Yeah. That's the mazurka one, accent. Two, three, mm -hmm. one, two. And from the three, you push to go to the one. Mm -hmm. So there's a sense of that you project yourself in a different space somehow. Mm -hmm. There's something that I like. So it's the, m the most accented of the three movements. I think so, to me, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if the first movement is like a reverie, then the second, mo or a flaneur, 
yeah. walking through <laughs> the streets yeah, of Paris. Yes. The second movement has a kind of more grounded, folkier. The last one, said, to me, is just joyous. Yes. Oh, well, yes. Just talk about the joyous. last one. Very <laughs> joyous. There's yeah. so much joy. There's so much it. energy, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, unfortunately, being a dancer when you're on stage, you also sometimes, unfortunately, remember that by the third movement, you're really tired, mm. you know? but, but it takes you, it really mm -hmm. takes you, it's, uh, yeah. But it's more expansive at the same time. Yeah, the movement. yeah because the space, it's yeah. a big menage and those right. things. It's almost open, I love that ending, yes. because everything was restricted to mm -hmm. them, and we don't know, they the go, other, they they're almost an explosion <laughs> into Against all each the other space. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. An explosion of energy. Yeah. yeah. Are, are there other ballets that it reminds you of in from your repertoire or from the larger ballet repertoire? I have never thought about it. That's interesting. I think it's unique. I think this piece is really unique. Mm -hmm. well, talk about the plie in this ballet, because it seems like so much comes from the, the a very, very supple use of the plie. Yeah, I, I think that um, sometimes I, it's a little bit forgotten. Mm -hmm the plié, the fondu, you mm -hmm. know, because Balanchine used to go really low into those plié, oh, yes, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. I have memories yes. of steps that he would do in class also for the and male dancers, and it was bad. Jumps. Yeah, yes. slow, the slow push, and all yes. of that. So that's, that's one of those things that was very important to him, I think, like the epaulement was very important mm -hmm. to him. Oh, yes. You know, like uh, the heads, the neck of, you know, all of that mm -hmm. uh, was very important. So there's some basic things that was part of his vocabulary, mm -hmm. um, not one vocabulary, you know, or the, the core. And he wanted to it. set them out in a way in this piece, maybe. Yes, yeah, somehow it was there. Some, some way it was there mm -hmm. quite often, yeah. There's this down and up quality that you talk yeah, about right. a lot in the, c in the yeah. coaching. It's up, down, mm -hmm. but it's feel almost like yes. galloping, you know, mm. there's that feeling, that wonderful <laughs> feeling for that, yeah. That bring, makes me remember something also. There's a very much a horse movement in, in, in the piece. There, you know, there are these, these foot drags that are a little bit like a horse showing oh, yes. us in the first <laughs> movement. Yes. Did that come from you or did no, that? No, 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 no. From Mr. B's yeah. own experiences, uh -huh. I'm sure. Except you did it pretty well. The, you know? Well, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, but... No, but I mean, uh, horses to him, you spoke about the right. horses. So right. often, you know what he did in Saratoga. Oh, yeah. You were in the company already. He yeah. invited some Lipizzaners from Florida to come and make special shows on the grass, on top of the grass of the theater, mm -hmm. before the ballet performance. Mm -hmm. And to get it going, they asked a few people to put a white tutu, I was one of them. And we went there and held with the, the horse and did <laughs> something with the horse. He wanted to show the similarities of horses and ballet dancers. Yeah, interesting. Th there was some. Um, it yeah. should be done more often than yeah. again. Yeah. You know. There's lots of the steps. You know, uh, for example, I, I like lithograph, and I remember a long, long time ago buying lithograph a horse in the air, and it said. The, t the steps that, that that horse was doing, it was called a cabriole. Mm. Oh, okay. So maybe the cabriole really yes. did not start with just with ballet. It came maybe it came by, from the horse. By dressage, you know. The, yeah. And do you remember the atmosphere in the studio when he was making it? It, it was lovely because it was very personal. Mm -hmm. We were really only these few people in the studio. Everybody else was somewhere else. And so we were, that was it. It was a present. Total present, present, present right. mm -hmm. for all people there. That's right. You've taught uh, Sanatine to, you said, to one dancer, and now you've coached these wonderful dancers. What, I what are the most challenging aspects of the ballet for, for today's wonderful, technically beautiful dancers? You don't want them to dance like you. Mm -hmm. So you say, that's the way I feel so comfortable doing it, but you don't want to tell them there's only that one way, mm -hmm. you know, because there's other ways also to interpret Balanchine.